All right, there we go. Okay, so last time we were talking about ailerons. And we found out that an aileron with the Roscom convention Um, a positive aileron gave a positive rolling moment and a negative yawing moment. And we called this adverse yaw. Because it was yawing out of a turn. If you want to bank to the right, this tends to yaw you out of the turn. So a fix for this is what are called lift spoilers. This is a flap that's on top of the wing. And when it deploys, it stalls the flow on that part of the wing. So let's draw a picture of that. So there's the wing. This is a flap that's deflected up high enough that the flow behind it is stalled. There's a wake behind it. And because it stalls at that part of the wing, we get a loss in lift and an increase in drag. And nothing happens on the left wing. So the loss in lift there causes a positive roll and the increase in drag backward, so you have a bigger drag vector here than this, also causes a positive yaw, which tends to yaw you into the turn rather than away from the turn. Now if you sit, whenever you fly commercial again, um, on a commercial airplane, I like to sit right over the wing and uh, if I can't sit in first class, of course. Because um, it's fun to, sitting in, over the top of the wing for several reasons. Um, the CG is usually right near the point where you're sitting. So when the airplane pitches up and down, you don't feel that motion so much. Also, the structure of the wing going through the fuselage, there's a lot more structure there. So in the event of a crash, I think you have a better chance of surviving. Although the statistics say it doesn't matter where you're sitting. And maybe that's just because if you crash, it's a pretty bad thing and it's not good either way. The downside is where's most of the fuel? In the wing, right? So if in the event of a crash, you have all this structure, but that's where the giant fireball will be. But um, Anyway, it's fun to sit over the wing because you can look out the window and you can see the ailerons and the flaps deploy. You can see the spoilers. And most commercial aircraft will have ailerons and spoilers. So you, you will look out there and if the pilot's making really small adjustments at high speed, only the ailerons work or are engaged. But when you're coming in for a landing and he's doing some quick maneuvering, maybe to line up with the runway, you'll see those spoilers flip up also when he's commanding a roll rate. And that's because at the lower air speeds, you have less dynamic pressure, so you get less roll from the ailerons. So he has to deflect the ailerons more. So he gets adverse yaw and the spoilers will help roll the airplane, but also counteract the adverse yaw. So if you schedule it right, you can get the proverse yaw, cancel out the adverse yaw, and you get no real yaw at all, and you get the roll that you want. So next time, if you happen to be sitting next to the window, and you can look out during landing, look out and watch all that stuff happening. Just some terminology or comments you might hear when you get into the industry. Uh, ailerons are called rate controls. I'm 
meaning if you deflect an aileron, you get a roll rate P. And as long as you keep the aileron deflected, you keep rolling. You keep rolling, and in fact, the rate will tend to increase. Um, an elevator is um, more of a, what's called a displacement control. Although when you first deflect it, you'll create a pitch rate. Usually you'll pitch up to a new steady state trim attitude and then you'll stay there. And you have to keep the elevator deflected to the new position to stay at your new trim value. And we've seen that when we've calculated pitch trim for level flight and for pull-ups, right? You have to pull on the stick, change the elevator to get to a new flight condition, but then you will hold it there. Kind of like the steering wheel analogy. When you're in a turn, you hold the steering wheel to stay in the turn. So that's the displacement, an elevator here produces a constant alpha typically. And then the same thing with the rudder. It's called a displacement control because to maintain a steady state side slip, you need to hold the rudder in. And we can see that we haven't talked too much about that but if we look at just the stick figure of our airplane, if we have some side slip coming in, that's going to want to yaw the airplane into the side slip if our airplane's stable. That's fundamental stability. So the airplane wants to get rid of the side slip. So what if we wanted to fly with 10 degrees of side slip? We've got to have something that counteracts that yaw and essentially yaw trims the airplane. Because if we're flying at an angle of attack effectively on the rudder, we've got to have something else that, that yaw trims it. And so we would need to deflect the rudder over like that to produce a negative yawing moment that cancels out the yawing moment positive due to the side slip. So you can fly at a constant side slip, but you need rudder. Just like to fly at a constant angle of attack, you need some elevator to keep you in that pitch trim. So you might hear this terminology at some point in your career. The ailerons give you a rate. In fact, to bank to into a turn, you'll kick in the ailerons, you'll bank into the turn, and then you'll pretty much go back to zero, zero aileron and just pull on the stick to do the turn. You need a little bit of aileron in there to counteract some other things, but mostly it's small. Uh, structural flexibility. Remember when I drew a picture of a really long tail boom and how if it's a real floppy tail boom, when you deflect the elevator, it could cause the tail to flex up and down and negate the effect of the elevator. You remember that picture? This long fuselage that went back. You can especially get this with ailerons. If you have long, thin wings and you do your structure wrong, you can get what's called aileron reversal. And so this is an aerodynamic structural dynamics effect. So imagine an airplane with really long thin wings. You want, you say, hey, I'm going to do an airplane and get my aspect ratio super high so that I get all this great aerodynamic efficiency. And I'm going to count on the structures people to just make this happen. Right? Oh, yeah, thank you. So there's my long thin airplane wing. And so imagine that we have ailerons way out here because the further out here you put them, the more effective they become. So I deflect this aileron like that. And the intent of this positive aileron is to roll this way, right? Well, we're gonna get less lift here 
and the drag we aren't going to care about right now. So we get less lift there. But if the structure is really bad, this deflection is going to actually flex the wing to a higher angle of attack, that portion of the wing. You could see this on the foam airplane, right? If I deflect an aileron here to push down on the back of the wing, but it could twist the wing up. And so it could be that the higher angle of attack is enough to produce more lift beyond the loss of lift due to the aileron here. And so you get aileron reversal. When you want to bank right, you do stick right, and instead you bank the other way. And that's really confusing. In fact, a former student here, uh, Nathan Forrest, I think I've got his name right, went to work for a small aircraft company um, out west. He was an experimental test pilot. When they brought the experimental airplane in and took it apart and put it back together, they misrigged the ailerons where the ailerons were reversed. And he and the CEO of the company took off for a flight. The ailerons were backwards. So whenever they went this way, the airplane rolled the other way. They took off and they, it was so confusing that they crashed and they both died. Now it wasn't because of this, it was because the guy that put the cables and everything back together got it reversed around. Not to bum you out with a sad story, but it's, I guess the, the key thing there is you go around, kick the tires, and you move the controls and make sure that everything's working right before you take off. But that would be a hard thing to catch because you'd go and you'd look and you'd see, oh, yeah, the ailerons are moving, elevators moving, rudders working. All right, so we did that. So that's yaw control, yaw stability, aileron roll control, uh, roll or bank angle stability. Um, so for the rest of today, I think we have time to go through this. I just want to quickly summarize all of the possible stability parameters that you could have for an airplane. So this is a quick summary, and it's all related to the concept of static stability, where you have a disturbance from equilibrium, and you get a force or a moment in the restoring direction. That's the whole basic idea. So we're gonna look at all of the variables, the velocities are forward, vertical, down, because Z is down, and then V sideways. So the first one is forward velocity U. What we want is if we get an increase in forward velocity, we want a force generated that opposes that. So let's pull out the foam airplane. If I'm flying along at 100 feet per second and a gust or something else causes me to to have an airspeed of 110, I want more drag to slow me back down. Pretty natural, right? So a delta gust forward velocity gives me a delta drag. So we write this as the derivative 
of drag coefficient with forward velocity needs to be positive. That's a natural thing. That's the second one is side velocity. V, we want a side force. So if we have a side velocity, which is related to side slip coming in from the right of the airplane, we want a negative side force, Y, to stop that motion. Lost my tail. So imagine you're traveling along with the airplane, you see it's flying along. Suddenly the airplane starts going sideways that way. You want to force in the negative direction to stop that motion. Pretty straightforward, right? So we write this as the side force coefficient, derivative with respect to side velocity. We want that to be negative. Again, the only reason this one's positive is drag is backward and not in the forward x direction. That's why the sign is different. If we were doing this not in terms of drag, but in terms of x force forward, this would be negative as well. And the same thing with, with downward velocity, right? V, w is down. If the airplane starts to drop, we want the lift to increase to stop that dropping. Again, real straightforward. So if we have a delta W, which is related to alpha, we want a positive lift to increase that. Now this thing, the side force, sorry, I forgot to we'll have to jump back up here. Since V is proportional to beta, often that's written as CY beta. Because a positive V gives you a positive beta, you just divide by U to get the beta. And the same thing here, the vertical velocity and increase in velocity downward, you want an increase in lift because lift is in the negative Z direction. And so we'll write this as C L W, but that's usually not what we talk about. We talk about C L alpha because alpha is related to the vertical velocity. And we want that to be positive. And you think about, if you think about all three of these, almost always you have this kind of stability. It just happens because as you go forward faster, you're naturally gonna get more drag backward. Check. If you go sideways, you got this fuselage moving through the air, it's gonna to wanna to stop the airplane from going sideways. CL alpha is usually positive, right? You increase your angle of attack, you get more lift, unless you're stalled. So if we're stalled and we get an alpha gust, it actually will start to fall more and increase that. And so that's why another reason why stall is bad. You lose lift, but you also lose some of the stability parameters. All right, so those are the velocities. And then we have stability with regard to rotational rates. Is everybody caught up with this board? You guys good? That way, I, hopefully, the mirror people in the other room will be about in the same place. Okay, so then the next thing is rotational rates. And you're going, wait a minute, I'm not even talking about CM alpha, CN beta, or CL beta yet. No, those are down near the end. We'll get to those. We've already done those. So now we got a roll rate a pitch rate, and a yaw rate. So these are gonna be opposed by moments. Over here, our velocities were opposed by forces. Let me switch back over to that screen real quick. 
So for the zoom people, this is what I just wrote over here. So the velocities were opposed by forces and you can see how that naturally works, right? And so the rates are opposed by moments. So the first one here, a roll rate. These are real straightforward. A positive roll rate is going to be opposed by a negative rolling moment. Let's get out the foam airplane again. So I'm rolling positive, which is right wing down. So I've got a roll rate like this. I want some part of the airplane to stop that. Do you see anything that might cause it to slow down or stop a roll rate? What do you think? I can feel it as I try to spin it fast. What's keeping it from rolling really fast? Yeah, this wing's going down, that wing's going up. You get a differential in lift. It's just the air resistance of this thing is going to stop that. So if you have an airplane with big wings sticking out to the sides, there's going to be a natural stability in roll rate, except when? Yeah, if we're stalled, and I think we talked a little bit about this, if we're stalled, this thing's going down, and so it actually could stall this worse. And you may unstall this side, and it will actually cause it to roll faster, which unstalls this wing even, this wing even more and stalls this one more, and that's where you get into a spin when you're in a stall. So you stall and you get some asymmetry in the airflow. This one wing stalls a little different than the other. Airplane starts to drop and it causes it to roll even more. So the stability that we want here is the rolling moment coefficient, CLP needs to be negative. So the rolling moment opposes the roll rate disturbance. And that story is the same for all of the rates. Pitch rate, Q, we want a positive Q opposed by a negative pitching moment. So that means C and Q is zero. The change in CM opposed, uh, the change in CM due to a Pitch rate is negative to stop it from happening. We're pitching. The CG is usually in the middle of the wing, so the wing's rotating, but not really a whole lot. Let's throw the wing away. Now we're pitching. What's going to stop the pitch rate? What do you see sweeping through the air? This tail, right? So the tail angle of attack increases on it, and it's going to create a force times the moment arm that's going to stop the pitch rate. Unless we're stalled. If the wing's stalled, you get this huge wake <coughs> that blankets the tail. Maybe the tail's stalled too, <coughs> and so you lose that stability if you're stalled. So not only does the airplane roll faster as it rolls, but it also pitches faster as it pitches if you're stalled. Uh, we don't need the wings again for the next part. So the last one's yaw rate. Why'd I go from one to three? All right, so we have a yaw rate, which is a disturbance because normal flight is no rate. So we have a yaw rate R. We want it opposed by a negative yawing moment. So C and subscript R. Again, all these are just shorthand notation for derivatives. You want that to be negative. So with everything taken off the airplane, you might guess as to what's gonna stop a yaw rate. Positive yaw rate is nose right, so we're spinning like this. What's gonna stop that? This vertical tail sweeping through the air. 
unless the wing is stalled and you get a weight coming back and it blankets out the tail. So the pieces of the airplane that, that give you this, here we have the wing. Uh, this was the horizontal tail. And this is provided by the vertical tail. I guess that sounds like a commercial. You get on an airplane and the pilot says, today our yaw stability is provided by our sponsor, the vertical tail, right? But that's the piece of the airplane, and that's one of the reasons it's there. And then the ones that are left are the ones we've already studied, which don't really fit into the velocities opposed by forces or the rates opposed by moments. but they fit because they're angles opposed by moments. Which fits, right? An angle, you could change an angle with a moment. So that makes sense as well. So we have alpha and beta angles opposed I remembered the switch, right? Yeah, okay. So how does this work? A positive delta alpha, an increase in angle of attack, is the airplane pitching nose up. So we want a negative moment to reduce that down. And we've talked through that to death, probably. So we want a negative moment. So that's where we get our CM alpha is less than zero. Now this is a little trickier, but you know the answer to this because we've talked about it. What provides that? It's actually a balancing act between the wing and the tail, right? Where we find that neutral point and make sure that the center of lift of the two acts behind the CG so that if the lift increases due to alpha, then you get that nose down. So this is sponsored by the neutral point behind CG. So how are we doing on time? Five minutes, I need to leave time because we want to pass back quizzes. So remind me that we stopped here. We still need to talk about the beta next time. Um, Quick story, I was at uh, flying out of Key West. We get on board the airplane and they ask for volunteers to move backward in the airplane. Seems weird, right? You wanna make sure the CG is in front of the neutral point. Why are we moving the CG back? The what? Uh, the CG actually was in ahead of the, the ability to do a nose wheel rotation for takeoff. In other words, rotate the airplane. As it turned out, it was a short field runway, um, and they needed to rotate real early. Uh, so that was interesting. There were a bunch of other interesting aspects of that flight, too. Remind me to tell you about that next time. All right, listen up for your name. Hopefully, I got these sorted right, that you are the guys that are here. Is Colin Beal here? All right, so, so far, so good. Sid Paddock? Jennings, Behringer. Oh, crap. No wonder it was working so well. No, there's another stack here. Yeah. Well, that explains why you guys are all in front. <laughs> yeah. well, maybe it's good it's Friday. I need the weekend off. Okay. Colin Beal. Now we're good. Dennis, Sam, let me hold on to yours, uh, Sam Heim, you guys are in the back. 
That goes down to him. Helms, Dylan Helms, and Jonathan Gutierrez. Jonathan here. Send that down to him. Keep it folded. Where is Dylan? Could you make that down to him? Saritha. Berenger. Jennings is down there. Noah Johnson. Send that down there. Thank you for coming up. William Johnson. Johnston. Up here. Thank you. Krause. Tristan. Thanks again. Rayleigh. Thanks again. Miller. Throne. Lucas Moore. Panda. Sid. Oh, okay. Sorry. There you go. Sing, Deepak. Smith, Madeline. Stewart. Christopher Stewart. A couple people left. Uh, um, oh, you're Chris? Hamney Suzuki. Yeah, hang on a second. Kent Bent. Van Merhagen. Ziegler. Oh, yeah, there you go. Ziegler. Sorry, somebody was talking to me. But, yeah. Okay. I think I've seen that movie, but I've forgotten it. I need to look it up. Uh, the Die Hard guy. It. Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis. Yeah. I remember that being a good movie, and now I'm, yeah, I need to look that up again. We're always looking for something to watch. It's it because it produces a positive yaw, and the other arm produces a negative yaw, and so they'll cancel each other out. It looked like they were both flipped out, and so yeah. I thought that that would cause, like it would increase the uh, drag. The spoiler will increase the drag, which yaw is positive, but the aileron doesn't deflect up enough to spoil, to, to stall the flow, so you actually get less lift and less drag. Because you don't deflect the aileron on it. Uh, I mean, if you de deflect it up a whole bunch, you'd stall it as well, and you get the same effect. But typically, they're not right in front or behind of each other either, like I drew. Usually, the spoilers are more inboard and the ailerons further out. Yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of, like, they'll do an aileron rudder interconnect. Um, but it, it can, it's scheduled through the hydraulic system or through the mechanical flight controls where they, they, the spoilers don't deflect until you exceed a certain control authority. And so I, I don't know the details about it, but they have ways of scheduling that. Um, you'll need to come up to my office and we'll go through it there. Uh, yeah, not right now, come during office hours. Either before, yeah, before class any day, or Tuesdays and Thursday afternoons. Just shoot me an email if you're coming at a different time. Yeah, I sent that on to my grader, so he's looking at it. Yeah. Did you uh, schedule any advising appointments? No, I I saw your email. 